Since 2014, the research farm at Yorkton has been involved in a research study developed by Bill May with Agriculture Canada out of Indian Head. The main objective of the study is to find oat varieties which are responsive to high nitrogen rates and can still maintain test weights that are required by oat millers. Bill will be writing up the final results, but I thought I'd show you a peek at what has been analyzed so far. There were four sites to the study. Yorkton was run by the East Central Research Foundation. Ag Canada ran Indian Head. The Northeast Agriculture Research Foundation ran Melfort. And the Southeast Research Farm ran Redvers. Every location had stride oats as a check. But other than that, the varieties tested differed between locations. Bill took this approach to screen as many varieties as possible with limited resources. All varieties at every location were tested at 40, 60, 80, and 120 kilograms per hectare of actual nitrogen. So let's start with the results from Yorkton, as that's the site that I ran. The Czech variety, Stride, was compared to CDC Dancer, Summit, and Triactor. Statistically, Triactor was the highest yielding variety in 2014 and 2015. Numerically, it was also the highest yielding variety in 2016, but statistically, it didn't yield more than Summit. The ranking of CDC Dancer was inconsistent between years. It was the second highest yielding variety in 2014, but it was the lowest yielding variety in 2015 and 16. There were no interactions between variety and nitrogen rate for yield or test weights in 2014 or 2015. In other words, the varieties responded the same to increasing nitrogen rates. This figure shows the nitrogen response for those years when averaged over variety. The varieties kept responding to added nitrogen all the way up to 120 kg per hectare, which is substantially more than the 60 kg per hectare currently recommended. I know what you're thinking. If I put 120 kg per hectare on my oats, it's going to go flat. Well, that may be true. For our study, only CDC Dancer and Stride substantially lodged at 120 kg per hectare. On this figure, a rating of 10 would mean the crop is flat to the ground. So you can see Summit and Triactor are holding up pretty good in 2014, which likely contributed to their higher yields. In 2016, yield of Summit and Triactor responded again to nitrogen all the way to 120 kg per hectare. However, the yield of CDC Dancer and Stride were probably more maxed out at 80. Lodging with CDC Dancer and Stride was more pronounced as N rates were increased. This is likely the reason their yield maxed out at 80 kg per hectare. Again, Summit and Triactor were fairly resistant to lodging. So at this point, I'm really cheering for Triactor to have good test weights because it was the highest yielding variety three years running and also had excellent resistance to lodging. But it would appear you can't have it all. The red line on this figure is the test weight of 250 grams, which is a good place to aim for. Technically, anything over 235 grams could be acceptable for milling quality. But I should mention the test weights over the course of this study were higher than normal. This is likely because of ideal growing conditions. We never really got a dry period in late summer, which can markedly reduce test weights. So you can see from this figure that Triactor had considerably lower test weights than the rest of the pack in 2014. Triactor again had substantially poor test weights in 2015. And in 2016. So Stride had the best test weights in two years and Triactor had the worst test weights in three years in a row. Again this is very disappointing as Triactor was the highest yielding variety and resisted lodging quite well. But its lower test weights make it a riskier variety to grow. I guess all things considered, Summit would be a good variety to try as it had decent yields, good test weights, and resisted lodging. It's also on the preferred list of grain millers in Richardson. Let's move on to the results from Melfort. At Melfort, the Czech variety stride was compared to CDC Minstrel, AC Morgan, and CDC Seabiscuit. 
AC Morgan was the highest yielding variety three years running. Like Yorkton, varieties responded to increasing nitrogen rates all the way to 120 kg per hectare in 2014 and 2015. In 2016, yields were very high, but the yield response was fairly modest, maxing out at maybe 60 kg per hectare. Lodging was fairly modest in 2014 and 15, and only increased slightly with the highest rate of 120 kg per hectare. In 2016, lodging increased substantially with increasing nitrogen, and this may have limited the yield response. In 2014, the test weights for all varieties stayed way above the target red line of 250 grams, regardless of the nitrogen rate. In 2015, Stride was the only variety that could stay above the red line. Unfortunately, it was also the lowest yielding variety in 2015. AC Morgan was fairly close to the line, which was good. In 2016, Stride and AC Morgan again had better test weights and managed to stay close to the red line. Morgan might be a variety to consider as it was the highest yielding three years in a row and maintained better test weights compared to CDC Minstrel and CDC Seabiscuit. Okay, moving on to Indian Head. In 2014, the Czech variety Stride was tested against Pinnacle, CDC Orn, and CDC Big Brown. While no significant differences could be detected between varieties, numerically, Stride ended up being the lowest yielding variety, again. Oat varieties were fairly unresponsive to increasing nitrogen, and yield peaked at 60 kg per hectare in 2014. This is quite different from Yorkton and Melfort, which responded all the way to 120 kg per hectare of N. Lodging was pretty bad and increased significantly with increasing nitrogen rates, which must have limited yield. Now I can hear everyone saying, see, I told you, this is why I don't put a lot of nitrogen with my oats, it's going to go flat. The test weights were clearly declining with increasing nitrogen rate. Increasing lodging is associated with decreasing test weights. Stride was the best at maintaining a high test weight, but CDC Big Brown and CDC Orn were in the running too. Pinnacle was definitely poor. In 2015 and 16, the varieties tested were changed. Stride was tested against CDC Ruffian, CS Camden, and CDC Big Brown. Stride yielded significantly less than the other varieties in 2015. It was also numerically lower in 2016. Overall, the yield of oats was maximized at maybe around 80 kg per hectare in 2015, whereas it was maximized at 120 kg per hectare in 2016. In 2015 and 16, lodging wasn't an issue like it was in 2014, which may explain why the two later years were more responsive to nitrogen. In 2015, Stride and CDC Big Brown had significantly higher test weights than the rest and managed to stay above the red line, even at high nitrogen rates. In 2016, Stride and CDC Big Brown again had significantly higher test weights. So Stride seems to maintain good test weights, but it's a low yielding variety. CDC Big Brown seems to be a higher yielding variety that is better at maintaining its test weight. Stride is on the Grain Miller's preferred list, and CDC Big Brown is on the Richardson's preferred list. Okay, finally we'll have a look at Redverse. In 2015, Stride was numerically the lowest yielding variety. However, there was technically, there wasn't a significant difference between the varieties which were tested. Those were Leggett, Suris, and CDC Morrison. Overall, oat yields were maximized between 60 and 80 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen. However, Oat yield was not very responsive to added nitrogen. There was an interaction with the lodging data. Lodging was quite bad with Saurus, whereas CDC Morrison kept standing well all the way to 120 kg per hectare. CDC Morrison is rated to have a very good resistance to lodging. Test weights at Redverse didn't do a good job of staying above the target red line. Saurus was particularly bad and was never above the line even at 40 kg per hectare of N. This likely is because it incurred significant lodging. Surprisingly, Saurus is rated to have very good lodging resistance and a relatively high test weight, according to the seed guide. Stride and CDC Morrison had the best test weights. Unfortunately, for some reason, Morrison doesn't appear on the preferred lists of either Grain Millers or Richardson. 
In 2016, Justice replaced Leggett. There was a significant interaction with the yield data and Justice was a little less responsive to added fertilizer. Again, CDC Morrison resisted lodging quite well as end rates were increased, just as it did in 2015. However, lodging was a significant factor for the remaining varieties. Despite CDC Morrison resisting lodging, its test weights were poorer than the rest of the pack. Overall, it's kind of hard to pick a favorite from the Redverse data. Conclusions. Stride had a relatively good test weight, but it was often the lowest yielding variety. It had a test weight of 250 grams compared to an overall average of the other varieties of being only 250 grams. Stride yielded, though, about 6% lower than the average of all the other varieties. Current recommendations for fertilizing oats are around 60 kilograms per hectare of N. However, there were quite a few instances where oats responded to nitrogen beyond this level. Perhaps this is because we're in a wetter cycle. So there were 22 instances where oats responded to nitrogen all the way to 120 kilograms per hectare. Six instances where they kind of maxed out at 80 and 16 instances where they kind of maxed out at 60 kilograms per hectare. So we're all over the map. Increasing nitrogen rates decrease test weights of oats, but good environmental conditions, which are conducive to high yields, don't seem to be reducing test weights. Lodging is associated with reduced test weights. From the Yorkton site, some had appeared to be a decent yielding variety that resisted lodging and had good test weights. From the Melfort site, A.C. Morgan looked like a variety worth considering based on yield and test weight. However, it doesn't come with a best disease package and it's only on the acceptable list for grain millers. From the Indian Head site, Big Brown was a decent yielding variety and maintained good test weight. It doesn't appear on the grain millers list, but it is on the Richardson's list. It's a tan holdout. From Redverse, it's hard to pick a potential variety other than Stride, which numerically had higher test weights. Justice also maintained a good test weight, but that's just one site here of data. It is difficult to find an oat variety which is high yielding, responsive to nitrogen, and able to sustain a good test weight. Overall, test weights were pretty good in this study, which is likely due to ideal growing conditions without a late summer dry period. And I just finally, I'd just like to mention that Bill will be writing up the final report which will include some more data than what I've presented to you here. Well, that's it for the oat trial. I think the oat growers should know I am doing my part by eating granola and oatmeal raisin cookies every day, but I definitely want to do more to support the oat industry. I must say I'm amazed at how differently oats can respond to added nitrogen. Many producers often seed their oats last, and I suspect oats are much less responsive to nitrogen when seeded late. I've applied for a trial which should shed some light on this and hopefully it gets funded.